This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Who I am is based on Him. He's holy, I'm holy. He's sanctified, I'm sanctified. He's, he, he's redeemed, I'm redeemed. Praise God. It's based on Him. Jesus is, 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 is the vine. We are the branches. If Jesus is holy, then we are holy too. It's important to not have our behavior define who we are, but rather who lives in us that defines who we are. I am defined by who lives in me. I'm not defined by my behavior. I am defined by who lives on the inside of me. Praise God. There is a purpose for your life. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. I open my Bible up and, 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 and I look into this mirror of the Word. The Bible calls and refers to the Word of God as a mirror. And I look into the mirror of the Word of God and I'm being transformed into that same image that I look at. I, I don't know how many years of my life I've been trying to convince Christian people, spend time in the Word, spend time in the Word, spend time in the Word, and they don't see why they need to spend time in the Word. Well, I'm telling you right now, as you begin to, to behold him in the word and you're spending time in that word and that word's going through your eye gate, your ear gate, and it's coming out of your mouth and you're looking in the mirror of the word of God. The Bible says as you take the time to focus and look in the mirror of the word of God, the Holy Spirit will accept the responsibility of making sure you're transformed into that same image that you're watching, praise God. Hallelujah. So what does this mean? Well, as you study the unconditional love of Jesus, as you discover that this loving Jesus is now on the inside of you, you're being transformed to a loving person too. And all that you discover about Jesus by reading the Word is now being transformed into you. And as you see Jesus in his righteousness, you will know that you are righteous too, for he lives in you continually. So thoughts of condemnation and, and shame will, will no longer be able to dominate you as, you as you study forgiveness of Jesus and you see that this Jesus is, is in you. You will be transformed to a forgiving person too because that's what you've been looking at. That's what you've been, you, you've been, you open the mirror up and you see a forgiving Jesus. You open the mirror up, you stand in front of the mirror, you get in that word, and you see a loving Jesus. I'll show you this actually happened in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. I'll show you this. I mean, when, when you behold Jesus, you behold his character. You behold his holiness. You behold his righteousness. You behold who he really is. And right here, obviously, they were looking at Jesus, and they be, begin to behold his his forgiveness. Luke 23, verse 34, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment, and they cast lots. So Jesus did that. Jesus forgave. Listen, Jesus was whipped with a cat of nine tails. He was, his, his body was, was and, and if you don't know what a cat of nine tails is, it's kind of a whip-like object that has these uh, different uh, tails at the very end. And, and in it, it has glass and, and, and metal. And so when they whipped Jesus with the cat of nine tails, the, 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 the tails 
would wrap around his body, and when they pull it off, it would pull his flesh off. There was not an inch of his body that was not impacted by that beating that day. The Bible it says he was not even recognizable. Wow. He took on the sins of the entire world. He became sin. And yet with all that he did, Jesus hanging on a cross, nailed to a cross, he forgave them. And when you behold a Jesus that could forgive, when you behold a Jesus that was betrayed, when you behold a Jesus who was punched out, when you behold a Jesus who was, who was whipped for something he didn't even do, when you behold a Jesus who took upon your sins and my sins upon his body, and he said, forgive, dude, that will be something that you will be transformed into. You'll be transformed into an individual who can forgive. I mean, you know, dude, you're holding on to things that you know you need to forgive. It's so cheap what you're holding on to compared to how expensive God had to go through everything he went through just for us, and then he forgave us. You're holding on to things that have happened in the past, and Jesus forgave us of all of our stuff. I mean, for no other reason to forgive people. You, you should forgive them because of what Jesus and how much Jesus has forgiven you. And you want to walk around and hold unforgiveness and, and act like you have a right to hold unforgiveness. And you're not going to, listen, forgiveness should not be something you have to pay for. It should be a gift. Here's the powerful thing about forgiveness is that because God has forgiven you, you can go ahead and forgive yourself. But you can also forgive other people. Somebody says, well, why is it so hard for me to forgive? Because you're not beholding the forgiving Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to transform you into a person that forgives. And as you behold that forgiveness in the mirror, you're, you're, you're made just like him. And as he is, so are we in this world. Look at Acts chapter 7, verse 59 and 60. You, you, you see, you see this, this Stephen who was, I mean, are you kidding me, was, was stoned to death, and he died. But before he died, look at verse 59, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. They stoned Stephen, and then Stephen calling upon God, and he said, look what he said. He said, Lord Jesus, he said, receive my spirit, verse 60. And he kneeled down, he cried with a loud voice, and he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So the very last thing that Stephen did before he died of being stoned, they murdered him right there. They stoned him to death. He forgave. How do you do that? By beholding Jesus. Stephen had be beheld a forgiving Jesus. And you and I, as we get in the Word, we can behold Jesus. And just by beholding him, the Holy Spirit says, I'll accept the responsibility to making sure that you are changed in that very image. We are being transformed by seeing Christ in us. We're being transformed by focusing on him. And this is true for all areas of our lives. We, as Christian people, we focus on so much other stuff. And it's real simple. Focus on Christ and Christ in you. You want to be transformed? You want to see your behavior transformed? You focus on Christ, and you focus on Christ in you. Praise God. Now, we, we've talked about sanctification and holiness and how you, you have been made holy, be ye holy as he is holy. But I'm telling you, your sanctification has moved inside of you. Your sanctification has moved inside of you. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 and 31. The Bible explains that just like Jesus has become our righteousness, he has also become our sanctification. He says in verse 30, But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, he's been made unto us righteousness, and he's been made unto us sanctification. Same Greek word is translated holiness. Sanctification and holiness. He has been made unto us. He has become our sanctification. He has become our holiness. You see, your sanctification, watch this, your holiness, your sanctification is a person. That person is Jesus. 
And the moment we are born again, we are made righteous. The moment we are born again, we are made holy. The moment we are born again, we are redeemed. We have wisdom. It's an instant miracle. Please understand, the day you got born again, here's the instant miracle that you experience. It was the miracle of instantly being made holy, instantly being made sanctified, righteous, Instantly, it was an instant miracle. And so some say, but I thought I had to try to live holy to gradually become holy. I thought I had to live righteous in order to gradually, gradually become righteous. No, that's called self-holiness and self-righteousness. We do not live holy in order to become holy, but we live holy because we have already been made holy. This is who we are now. I am now holy the day I got born again, and now from my identity, I produce the evidence and the fruit of holiness. The Bible repeatedly called believers saints. We're not, we're not sinners anymore. It's amazing to me that the number of Christians that still go around and say, well, you know, Brother Dollar, I'm, I'm just nothing but an old sinner. No, the Bible does not refer to you as a sinner anymore. When that instant miracle took place and you became righteous, you became holy, you became sanctified, you had wisdom, when that, that happened that day, that happened that day, you are holy right now. Even though people don't see the fruit of holiness right now, you're holy right now. Even though they don't see the fruit of righteousness, you're righteous right now. Glory be to God. And you have to go ahead and receive that by faith, but you're, the Bible, let me show you three scriptures. The Bible refers to you as a saint, not as a sinner. Look at Philippians chapter 1 and uh, verse 1. He refers to us as a saint, not a sinner. Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus. Once you're in Christ Jesus, you're a saint. To all the saints which are in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi and the bishops and the deacons. So, he refers to people who have been born again as saints, as saints. Look at Philippians 4.22. I'm amazed the number of times this is in here, and because we don't know our identity, because we're not focusing on Christ and Christ in us, we keep referring to ourselves as, the, you know, the, the old person that before we got born again. In verse 22, it says, all the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household refers to them as saints. Look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 2. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 2. He says, to the saints and the faithful brethren in Christ. So, those who are in Christ are referred to again as what? Saints. And then look at Philemon verse 5. Philemon verse 5. And even in Philemon, uh, verse 5 shows us that he is, again, making reference to Christian people, those who are in Christ. He's making reference to them as saints of God, saints of God. And so, we're no longer sinners saved by grace. We are saints of God. And so, we've, we've got to understand that it's not like a house, you know. It's not like, you know, uh, when you move in a different house, you got to re-clean that house to make sure it's clean. That's not what this is. Only the blood of Jesus can do a perfect job where cleaning you are concerned. We don't have to re-clean you. You, when the whole, listen, when you, when you got born again, the Holy Ghost came in, he clean, you, you're clean, as clean as you ever going to be. As clean as you're, look at Hebrews chapter 10 and 10, as clean as you're ever going to be. It's, it's, it's not, well, I got to clean the house. Well, I'll tell you what, Brother Dollar, uh, you know, we got to clean the house. No, no. You, you, when you got born again, you clean. You clean. Hebrews chapter 10 and 10, he says, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, and we were sanctified once and for all. Once and for all, which means don't have to be sanctified no more. Sanctified once and for all. And look at uh, Hebrews 10, 14. Sanctify once and for all, for all time. Praise God. You're born again. You are sanctified once and for all times. Verse 14, 
for by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. So you are, listen, you're sanctified once and for all, and then you, uh, you have been perfected. Who have been perfected? Those who have been sanctified, you've been perfected forever. Those who are sanctified, those who have, who have Christ in them, and he says you have been perfected forever. That's powerful. And none of that has to do with, with your behavior right now. That's the fruit of your repentance. You're going to see that coming a little later on, but we've got it so backwards. We have been just looking at how we've been, hey, been, been behaving and what we've been doing, and that has, that has canceled out who you really are. You have been sanctified, and he has perfected for how long? Forever those who have been sanctified. So we're not having to reclaim. You are perfected forever. Glory be to God. You are perfected forever, praise God. You are now cleansed and holy, so holy that even the Holy Spirit lives in you. And Ephesians 1 and 4 says, we are holy and without blame before him. We are holy and without blame before him. So the Holy Spirit doesn't move in and out like some people think. Well, the Holy Spirit moved in you to, you know, today you got to say, ah, oh, you messed up. He moved out. Oh, well, re you repent, repent so you can get him back in. He comes back in. And then, you know, you, you had a bad attitude. Ah, oh, he moved out. The Holy Ghost doesn't move in and out like that. That's not how that works. He comes to stay forever. Look at John 14, 16. The Holy Spirit comes to stay forever. He doesn't move in, you know, when you're good and then out when you're, when you're bad. And, and, and most of that's referring to your behavior. You think, well, oh, if I have good behavior, the Holy Spirit's moving in. Ah, oh, but if I have bad behavior, I'm going to cause the Holy Spirit. I'm going to lose the Holy Ghost. No, that's, that's incorrect. That's not correct. Look, John 14, 16 says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you for how long? forever, forever. There's no in and out. He's going to live and abide with you forever. There is no in and out. Praise God. So, we've already been made holy. That's my point. We've already been made holy. Look at Colossians 3 and 12. We've already been made holy. I got to call these scriptures up because I know what I'm preaching right now sounds scandalous in some of the ears of people who are hearing it tonight. Colossians chapter 3 and 12, he says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. That's what we have put on. And look at Romans 11, 16. You are already holy. Say that. I'm already holy. I'm already sanctified. I'm already righteous. Praise God. Romans 11, verse 16. He says, for if the first fruit be holy, then the lump is also holy. If Jesus is holy, we're holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. He's the root, we're the branches. We're holy. Our holiness is based on the first fruit. Our holiness is based on him. Our holiness is based on Jesus. If Jesus is holy, I'm holy. And if Jesus is all right, I'm all right. And if Jesus hadn't fallen into sin, and if Jesus is no longer all, uh, uh, not all right, see, that's not going to happen. I'm, I'm going to be all right because he's all right. Who I am is based on him. He's holy, I'm holy. He's sanctified, I'm sanctified. He's, he, he's redeemed, I'm redeemed. Praise God. It's based on him. Jesus is, 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 is the vine. We are the branches. If Jesus is holy, then we are holy too. It's important to not have our behavior define who we are, but rather who lives in us that defines who we are. I am defined by who lives in me. I'm not defined by my behavior. I am defined by who lives on the inside of me. Praise God. So people in the old covenant could not handle God's holiness. I mean, you saw that in... Uh, uh, you, uh, you, 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 Uzziah, he, he died, Uzziah died immediately after he touched the ark of God. I think you find that in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1, uh, 1 through 10. Uzziah, he touched it and, and he couldn't handle it, man. And, 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 and nobody could at that particular time. 
unclean priest couldn't do it. But today, Jesus lives on the inside of us, and we're still alive. Whew. Check that out. Jesus lives in me. He, could, he couldn't touch it back then and live. But Jesus lives on the inside of me, and I'm alive. Why? Because the blood did a thorough job of cleansing us. I am worthy. I am clean. I am pure. I am holy. So we've defined holiness as wholeness, and we, we, we define holiness as not being common with the world, bringing it into a place of practicality. But holiness, you know, we, you know, purified and separated from for sacred use. God separated us for his own purpose and use. God separated us for his own purpose and use. God has planned for us that his son shall be revealed in us, through us, and people will glorify God in us. People will glorify God. Look at this, Galatians chapter 1, 24. People will glorify God in us. That's powerful. Galatians 1, 24, and they glorify God in me. Paul was saying, they glorify God in me. Man, they saw and heard God, heard uh, the gospel being preached from a man that, that reaped havoc and, and murdered people. And when they heard what he preached and saw Jesus through Paul, they glorified God in him. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 7. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but man, you need to run this over and over and over and over and over and over again. Over and over and over and over again. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. He says, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse 7, but we have this treasure where? In earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us once you focus on Christ and Christ in you. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 2. Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 2. Now, again, you can now see why that is going to be the key to transformation. Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 2 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Yeah, that's happening right now. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. I, I'm telling you, this is the time where God is going to do some amazing things. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of injustice, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of hate, what's going to happen? God's going to rise. He's going to shine. There's a great revival getting ready to come. There's a great move of God getting ready to hit this planet. Listen, you already read that we are made righteous and holy in an instant. And the moment we get born again, praise God, however you may have reached, you, you might react to something like this, well, I thought this was a process. I can't see much of that righteousness or holiness yet. Yes, it is a process, but the process is not to become righteous and sanctified, but that the righteousness and the sanctification, which is Jesus, will become visible in and through your life. Sanctification and holiness becomes visible in and through your life. In and through your life. Colossians 1, and now he shall be formed in us. That is the life. That is a, 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 a lifelong process. Look at Galatians 4, 19. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here preaching to myself. Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. This is the process. This is, this is our life. He says, my little children of whom I travail in birth again unto Christ be formed in you. Unto Christ be formed in you. This is a lifelong process. Unto Christ be formed in you. It's important to see that even this process is a work of God. Unto Christ be formed in you. Let me close with a, a several scripture that this process is a work of God. It is not your work, it's his work 
Look at Philippians chapter 2, 13. I'm just going to fly through these real quick. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's his work, not yours. God is the one who's working in you. Glory to God. That's what I'm talking about. In his new three-message series, Grace-Based Holiness, Creflo Dollar challenges religion and reveals what holiness is really about. Get all three life-changing messages and the notes to take your study to a new level for a love gift of just 25 U.S. dollars or more. Jesus makes you holy. Your part is to mature into what he has already made you. He has already made you holy. Your part is to mature in who you already are. You will never become more holy as you mature. You simply grow into who God has already made you to be. Holiness is a fruit of salvation, not a root of salvation. Call the number on your screen or visit the website to order your combo today. It's a great time to take a moment and look at all the progress you've made so far in your year. Are you happy with your progress with personal goals and achievements? What about your relationships with family and friends or developing your relationship with God? If you'd like to take the initiative to take 15 minutes a day to start learning and growing, not only the understanding of God's grace, but learn how to rest from worry, mastering your emotions with peace, becoming a confident Christian. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar. You will have access to interactive Bible lessons that include features like e-courses, study guides, quizzes, and more. It's never too late to improve and grow for your self-development and develop God's grace and join Grace Life Academy. Start your 30-day free trial by texting GLA to 51555 to get started right now or go online and visit mygracelifeacademy.com. Do you have a burning desire to see lives changed by the gospel of grace? If so, prayerfully consider supporting Creflo Dollar Ministries financially. You may not be called to preach in a pulpit or perform missions work in another country, but you assist those who are called to do these things each time you give financial gifts to this ministry. God bless you, and I'll see you next time right here on Changing Your World. To support our kingdom mission of winning souls for Jesus, you may call us or give online at creflodollarministries.org. Thank you for giving and enabling us to share this gospel of grace all over the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.